Hi everyone. When you're getting started with painting, it's a good idea to learn the basics of painting light and shadow. In this video here, I went over some of the essential values that lead to convincing light and shadow. I was also on Proko's channel this month with a lesson on how the planes of the head directly feed into that knowledge. Both of these lessons I consider prerequisites to this one, so please check them out when you have the time. So this is the painting I did in that first video I just mentioned. She's lit by a single direct light source causing big areas of light and shadow. But for an alternate type of feel, you might choose to light your subject entirely in shadow. Now, I consider painting this type of light to be more advanced for a couple of reasons. First, when painting in shadow only, you usually have a much more limited value range to work with. Secondly, the reduced value range makes for more subtle transitions between elements. Here's a piece of photo reference. I'll sample some values in an area containing the brow, the eyebrow, the eye socket, the eye, and look how close everything is. Those are separate elements of the head I just sampled, but they're linked in value because they're all lit in shadow. The type of light we see in shadow is called ambient light. It's a diffuse or soft light, which is the opposite of a more harsh direct light like the sun. The consistent direction of a direct light forces a division between light and shadow. This is what we saw in this painting. Very clear families, there's a high value contrast between them. Ambient light rays, on the other hand, are more scattered. This diagram illustrates ambient light coming downward, say from the sky. Our object has the lightest values at the top, where it's most exposed to the sky. As it turns away from the sky, there's a gradual darkening. This type of soft gradation without obvious light and shadow families is typical of objects lit by ambient light. There are other sources of ambience too. Let's go back to our direct light for a moment and have some objects fly into the scene. In this case, direct light bounces off other objects and becomes diffuse. Here's the shadow without other objects influencing it. And I'll bring back the other objects and we see more of a range. Think of other objects as being like light relayers. Ambient light appears soft because the direction all these light relayers are running can be different. Okay, check this out. The major physical difference between a direct light and a diffuse light is the size of the light relative to the scene. In this rendering, I have a fairly small light positioned above the box. Its light rays come from a small point in space, so they're going to be pretty limited as to what they can hit directly. But when I scale up the size of the light, this is like ambient light from the sky versus sunlight here, the values in the scene come closer together because with a bigger area of light, more light rays are able to hit more areas. Again, this is why we don't see the harsh dark shadows you get with a direct light. But watch this. The box rises above the ground just a little bit, and we do get a very dark area under there. That is where the ambient light is occluded, hence the familiar term ambient occlusion. So when you're painting ambient light, it becomes very important to look for the deepest spaces and give those areas the darkest values. And yes, I have a whole video about ambient occlusion, so check that out too. Let's do a quick study though. I'm painting the box we just saw. May as well throw a sphere study in there for good measure. Now these are both under the same light, which is ambient light coming down from above, like skylight. I'll have the box hovering above the ground like we just saw in the example, but the sphere I'll just have sitting on the ground regularly. The amount of ambient occlusion will differ between the two. You can use any brush you want for these, any approach you want, so long as you acknowledge the principles we've learned so far. And I mean, those principles are pretty simple. In this case, so long as I give the top planes the lightest values, the side planes slightly darker values, and the planes that turn under, as well as those deep crevices, the darkest values, I'm going to be in pretty good shape. Now, the head is a more complicated form, obviously, but the head is just made of planes. It's a more complicated box, so it'll react in exactly the same way. Let me show you how I go about this. I'm starting out with a line drawing to help me maintain some overall alignment, because as you can start to see here, I'm only interested in the largest planes at the moment. I'm trying to reduce the head as much as I can toward that box, thinking about planes that point up versus planes that point more to the side, versus planes that point downward, as well as the deep crevices. So it's essentially a three value group consideration at first, with complexity added thanks to the soft edges I'm using between values. This first stage, while not exactly pretty yet, is probably the most important part because this is where you capture the structure of the head. 
Now, the logical question here is, how do you learn which planes of the head face in which directions? That's where physical models like this come in real handy. Big planes that face upward include the brow here, the front plane of the cheek, the front plane of the nose, as well as the top plane of the chin, and the upper planes of the muzzle area of the mouth. Okay, big planes that face the side include the temple plane here, the side plane of the cheek and the side plane of the jaw, as well as the side plane of the nose. And big planes that face under or the deepest crevices are like the eye socket here, just underneath the nose as well as the upper lip, and this underplane underneath the head itself. Going back to my painting now, we can see those three categories taking shape. The planes that point up get the lightest values, the planes that point to the side getting slightly darker, and the planes that go under get even darker. Here's a simplified version which may help reveal the organization I'm talking about. Alright, we'll continue this painting right after a short break. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace can help you attract clients with a professional looking portfolio website. There are tons of templates to work with. This one's pretty good, it's got the sections I need, and I can ensure that it works on multiple devices. Cool, let's go with this one. I can hover my mouse over various sections and edit them. For example here, I only want two categories. Watch how easy this is. Just click the two I don't want, hit delete, and I'm done. I want to change this gallery to showcase my character work. So a few clicks, change the title, swap the image, that's all you gotta do. I've been working on this site for less than five minutes and it's already coming together. In the gallery, I don't like how big these images are. This is easily solved with Squarespace's intuitive editing tools. And now I can load up the gallery with my own images. I'd like my contact section to have text fields. So I'll trash the entire thing, browse the templates here, and pick one that suits me. Squarespace makes it easy. Go to squarespace.com slash marcobucci and use my promo code marcobucci for 10% off. You can find the link in the description. All right, back to the lesson. So now that I've got the structure figured out, I can start refining the whole piece. I'm starting with the darks, fleshing out the ambient occlusion areas and giving the painting more contrast. I'm also focusing on smaller shapes here, like the undersides of the eyelids, the eyebrows, some smaller planes of the head, and I'll give the same consideration to the hair as well. On a draftsmanship level, this is where your alignment can start becoming faulty, so flip the canvas and just make sure you have an eye on that. This is an important stage too, because the character of what you're painting starts to happen here. So to recap, phase one of the painting dealt more with structure, phase two dealt more with character. Moving on to the final stage of the painting, I'd like to try adding a bit of an environment. That is, other objects in the background that may contribute a little bit more ambience to our character and shadow here. So it looks like light is striking something on the left side of the picture. I'll bring in some ambient light from the left. Just be very careful to not overdo this. Remember that ambient light is a soft or diffuse light. Those relay runners are coming in from different directions, which means they're hitting different planes from different angles, and that all translates to an overall softness of the form. So I've been calling this more advanced, and while I do think it's harder to paint this type of light, I think that understanding how it works is very easy. I mean, we're under 10 minutes at this point in the video, and I think I've covered the fundamentals. Except for color, that's a whole other topic. A topic I've already made a video on, actually. So add that to your list as well. And just to enhance the sense of ambience coming in from a certain direction, I'll get a broad airbrush and go over the left side of the form, which I think helps offset the tonal symmetry here. All right, so my end result came out like this. And I've been talking a lot about big plane changes. Let me show you some small ones. The brow can be broken into three subgroups. Each group of planes points upwards, but to slightly different degrees. And despite close values and soft edges, I really tried to be clear about that information. Also, this area here, where the eye socket and temple meet the cheekbone. There are subtle but definite directional changes there too, and I knew I couldn't call my painting finished until I captured that. The head is chock full of intricacies just like this, planes big and small. If you'd like to learn more about it, I have a seven hour class that focuses exclusively on understanding this stuff. Check it out at marcobucciartstore.com. And well, that wraps up this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Give this lighting a shot yourself. It could be a great step to find that next level in your painting. I want to thank my patrons for their generous support, and don't forget my Squarespace promo code for 10% off. Happy painting everyone, I'll see you in the next video.